Well, I'm actually here to talk about one of our newer businesses, which is Squirrel Money, which is a peer-to-peer -peer platform. Have we got any peer-to-peer -peer lenders in the room tonight? Oh, cool. Well, that's a, that's a good little show. What about Tinder? Have we got any Tinder people in the room? No. Oh, one. Yes. Wow. That's confident. Um, so for those that haven't invested in peer-to-peer -peer platforms yet, I guess it's like Tinder, but for money, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to sell it. <laughs> um, it's, 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 it's a platform. Uh, it's basically bringing together and matching borrowers with investors. But it's not like a finance company. We don't have a balance sheet. We're not grabbing money off you and then going and investing it in property. Um, we're simply acting as a platform to bring borrowers and investors together. If we, um, if we think about that, and I need to just adjust that slide down a tad. Cool. Um, we're talking disruption. It's a, it's a word that's, that's widely used now. Um, if we think about the market at the moment, and we're talking about the consumer finance market, now that's a $15 billion market of credit cards, personal loans, and, and finance company debts. The average borrower uh, through a bank is paying around 17%, whether that's for a credit card, which could be 14 through to 22%, or it's a personal loan. On the other side, as investors, you guys will be earning half a percent if you're lucky in a savings account, one percent in an online call account, three to four percent on a term deposit. So there's a bit of a gap. The gap's around 14 percent, and that's bank margin. So needless to say, this consumer finance business is very, very profitable. So what if we could change that? What if we could reduce the costs, reduce the obstacles, and disintermediate the banks to a small degree in this space. Where do we get to? So on the Squirrel Money platform at the moment, and it's a young platform, we've only done 10 million of lending so far, our borrowers are on average paying 12.5%, so it's a full 4.5% below the bank averages. Yeah? That rate goes from 8.95 through to about 17%. Bear in mind we're talking consumer finance, those are the high rates if it was a mortgage. On the other side, investors in the platform are earning 8.5% to 9%. There's a gap in the middle, the gap's around 4%. That 4%, 2% of that is the platform margin, that's what we take for running the platform. And the other 2% is how we manage the credit risk, which I'll cover off in a sec. The whole philosophy with these platforms is pay less, earn more. Um, as small as the platform is, and it's in its early stages, we're saving members around $650,000 a year in interest. That's either interest saved as borrowers or additional interest earned as investors. The big opportunity is that if we could, in our own way, make the market more competitive and reduce industry margins by 1%, that would save New Zealand borrowers $150 million a year in interest. So the opportunity with this new market is fantastic. There's two main models in the market. Now the one that you'll be familiar with is Harmony, um, because they do a lot of advertising. You may have thought of them just as a borrower, but they are a peer-to-peer -peer platform. And they use this model. This is a fractionalization model. All peer-to-peer -peer lenders in New Zealand uh, the others are quite small, but there's some like Lending Club and, and some others, all use the fractionalization model. Squirrel Money uses a different model, and I'll cover that off next. With the fractionalization model, the investor is investing in a loan, but you're also the credit manager. You've got to know who you're lending to. You've got to know their income, whether they're married or not, uh, what their job is, how long they've been in their job, where they live. Um, what they're borrowing for, how much they want to borrow, you name it, you've got to know it because you're taking the credit risk. If that borrower defaults on the loan, that's your risk. You lose your money. Now because of that, the strategy with these platforms is to diversify your risk across a large number of loans. The more loans, the better. Diversification is your friend. Hundreds and hundreds of loans, generally in very small increments, $25, $50, $100, because that's what spreads the risk. And if you do that, even if some of those loans fall over, you should generally get a pretty good return. Now, Harmony at the moment is reporting returns of around 13%. 
So if you manage the risk well and you put the effort in and you assess your loans properly, there's an opportunity there to get some good returns. Ours is a different model, it's a reserve fund model. Under this model, the borrower is paying interest to you, the investor, and you're getting 85 to 9%, but they're also contributing up to Loan Shield, which is a reserve fund. Now the difference here is that if the borrower misses a repayment or defaults on the loan, Loan Shield steps in and continues to make the payment to the investor. So provided there's sufficient reserves in the reserve fund, investors will get all of their repayments. So the difference between the two models is under fractionalization, you're the credit manager, you assess the loans, it's kind of buyer beware. These platforms will just throw all the loans up there, you're deciding what risks you take, you live with those risks, and you have to invest in small increments to, to basically diversify out of that. With the reserve fund, we'll act as a credit manager, we'll manage that risk on your behalf to a designated policy that we publish, any arrears or credit losses will be covered by the reserve fund provided there's sufficient reserves. Uh, and because we're managing the credit risk and because you're getting the diversification through the reserve fund, you can actually invest in lump sums. So you can put 10,000 in straight away and it can get invested. It's appropriate with peer-to-peer -to, -peer to talk about the elephant in the room. Um, because it's a, it's, a, it's a young technology, it's a young platform, it's a new investment class, um, people will naturally be very, very cautious about it. And there's two risks that I want to cover off. The first is the investment term. You're investing, at the moment, peer-to-peer -peer lending could go across just about any lending class, but we're in the consumer finance market at the moment. And those loans are generally two, three or five year loans. 65% of the loans on our platform are five year personal loans, right? The thing with a five year personal loan is it pays off principal and interest. So you are, if you follow that sort of blue line, you are getting principal back from day one, pretty much the way a mortgage would pay off, right? So although we call it a five year loan, in reality it's fully paid off at five years you're getting capital back from day one, and probably the average term of the loan is around three years. But it gets a bit better than that. What we find in reality is that these loans prepay at around 30% per year, which is the orange line. So on a portfolio of loans, you could generally expect to get about 40% of your capital back in the first year, and around 75% of your capital in the second year. Sorry, I jumped ahead. Um, so you're getting your capital back a lot faster. The final point is with the Squirrel Money platform, we're the only platform in New Zealand now that has a secondary market. And that means you can sell your loans back into the platform at any time, which creates additional liquidity. So although it's a two or three year investment, and it does repay faster than that, um, at any point in time you can actually sell your loan back into the platform, and provided there are other investors coming through the platform, that are looking for a similar sort of uh, term and interest rate, your loan will be sold. Anyone that's put a loan up on the secondary market at the moment, it's cleared out no problem at all. The second risk to cover off is credit risk. And if I hadn't thrown that slide up quite as fast, you would naturally assume that the loss rate on a consumer finance book would run at 10 to 15%. For people that aren't in the industry and don't understand this, your natural inclination is to go to something like 10 to 15 percent and to think of the dodgiest person you know uh, who you wouldn't give your money to, right? Because that's the consumer finance market. It's not all that bad. So at the moment, on your left hand side, 2.9 percent, which is the blue bar, is the average arrears rate of our major banks. And we got this out of an industry study. Uh, on our platform, we're currently running at 2.3 percent. So we're running at bank type arrears rates. It's a young platform, it's still young, so you know, we've still got to prove ourselves over more time. On the right hand side is our current loss rate. It's running at 0.6 of 1%. Now we're expecting it to go higher than that. Our, our forecast loss rate is 1.2%, but it's still really, really low. And this next graph will help make sense of that. On the left hand side, 
there's kind of a light blue bar that goes up to 5 or 6%. It'll be hard for you guys to see at the back. That's the reserve fund plus the reserve contributions in a 12-month period. We have 3 to 4% in the reserve fund, and we're reserving at around 2% on the, on the new loans originated into the platform. On top of that, you get 8 to 9% interest as an investor, which means that we have to have a loss rate in excess of 14% before we're putting your capital at risk. So what's the reality? Our expected loss rate is only 1.1, 1.2%. At that level, we've got more than enough reserves. We actually reserve at a rate higher than that, around 1.8 to 2%. So we should gradually build those reserves up over time, and it means we should have enough fat uh, in, the, in the reserves. The maximum loss rate of a peer-to-peer -peer platform the same as ours, which was in the UK market, their maximum loss rate was 5% at the height of the GFC. Now the GFC was a big event in the UK, it wasn't so bad here, 5%. At 5%, we pretty much would have exhausted the reserve fund, um, but you would have still got your interest, right? So what could we do? What sort of event could we conjure up that's bigger then the GFC in the UK. And the only event that I can practically put a, a hard number on is the unemployment rate in New Zealand after the 87 share market crash, which peaked in 1991-92 at just over 10%. So if we assume that unemployment rate equals default rate, what would that do? Now if we had a 10% loss rate, clearly the reserve fund's not big enough and investors would lose half their interest. So they would get a return of 4%, but you still wouldn't have your capital at risk. And the reason that that happens is in the event that the reserve fund runs out, we can basically do a haircut of all investors to replenish the reserve fund for the benefit of all investors. You basically take a haircut on your interest, and that money is diverted into the reserve fund to continue to pay out on the credit losses. So in that situation, you'd still get a 4% return. How do we look after your money? We're verifying the idea of the borrowers. We run comprehensive credit checking. This is way more than the traditional credit check. With comprehensive credit checking, we can see their account conduct on their power bill, any utilities, phones, uh, you name it, we can see all of their account conduct and behaviour. If they're missing payments, we can see it. And that's a, a fantastic predictor of default behaviour. Um, borrowers are risk graded, so higher risk borrowers pay more risk premium into the reserve fund. We electronically receive bank data, which means the borrower gives us permission to access the data directly off the bank. Uh, which eliminates online fraud and means we get very accurate information around income, expenses and financial commitments. Because we manage this with a reserve fund, um, we have to actively manage it because our performance is going to be judged on how well that reserve fund is managed. So we actively manage it from day one. We're chasing the debt. So although it's a direct relationship between you and the borrower, it's our responsibility to really drive home that debt recovery. We write off loans after three months. At that point, the reserve fund pays out the investor in totality. We send it to a debt collector. We chase the debt. So why is squirrel money? We're generating an 85 9% return for investors. There's a reserve fund there that's designed to help protect you against credit losses, and I think we've covered that in a bit of detail. The duration of the loans is around 18 months to two years, but as I said, there's a secondary market. You can sell your loans at any time. We've also got an auto reinvest feature, which means that any capital that's coming back into your cool account, uh, you can auto reinvest, which just means maintaining your investment balances is easy. And that's it for me. That's squirrelmoney.co.nz. Thanks very much.